Yeah, so Arnas, a real question for you today. So who pays on the first date? Me. In my opinion, if you're a man who actually, you know, goes out his way and invites a woman to a date, you should be the one paying. A lot of times when I go on dates with, you know, European girls, they usually offer me to split the bill. They're like, hey, do you want to split the bill? And most of the times I'm super surprised. I'm like, wow, you really offered me that. I never said yes to that. Um, you know, I'm the guy who pays on any date uh, because I think that's how it should be. You know, that's how it has worked for a long, long time where, you know, a man is a provider, a woman is a nurturer, and it's been working like that for like 10,000 years in our history. And just, you know, in the past 20, 30 years, something has changed. No, nothing has changed, guys. You know, it's been working for a while like that, and we don't need to change it, you know. Just if you're a man, you're fat, you're unsuccessful, you don't make money, you play stupid video games, you're unhappy. I mean, of course, you want a, vim, a woman to split the bill, right? But if you're a man who's confident, good looking, goes to the gym, makes money, has good connections, you know, is fun to talk to, is super interesting, you're not even going to think about asking a woman to split the bill and same goes for you know a woman to the point where like if you're super feminine you're not even gonna offer that and there shouldn't even be a question you know and you know what maybe in today's world if you're a woman you're, you're gonna run into a guy who's gonna be like let's split the bill you know what just split the fucking bill and never meet that guy again. You know, he's just not worth it. You know, if you're an actual feminine woman, you're worth, you know, a lot. Actually, you're worth a lot. So the least a real man can do is just pay on that first date. Pay on that fucking second date. Pay for everything. Let the men pay. You know, just be feminine. Be the nurturer. That's my thoughts on, you know, the, the kind of gender roles. And I'm surprised that it's kind of been mixed up in the past 10, 20 years, you know. Because when I see my parents, they've been together for like 32 years. And my dad always was the guy who's paying the bills of the family. Even my, my mom works, right? Well, she retired recently, but my mom worked for like 30-something years. Even, even then, what my dad was doing is literally putting all of his money towards just taking care of the family, taking care of my mother. And my mother was just using her money, you know, for like attractions, traveling, and the extra stuff, you know? we didn't actually need. So that's how I see it. And, you know, it's just proof. My parents been married for 32 years and it worked, you know, and it worked for 10,000 years. And that's how it should be. Straight on the point, bro. Uh, I also heard that a lot of women just offer to pay, not because they mean it, but uh, because they just want to be nice you know to you so yeah and uh, the, how much this world has changed is just surprising you know and uh, yeah i think the old ways are much better but of course not only the man has to change and go back to the old ways i think a wo woman's role is kind of forgotten too because a lot of women just want to be promiscuous and expect a traditional treatment because if you want a traditional tre treatment from a man, I think you should be a traditional woman as well. So to get uh, what you want, you have to act accordingly. I mean, yeah, absolutely. Um, 
I've heard this a lot where it's like um, a lot of women say, I'll be wife and material for the right man. And, you know, like that's the worst mindset you can have because basically there's no right or wrong man. There's just men and there's women. And you're either a feminine to all men or you're not feminine, you know. If you're a real woman who's like, you know, they like to call it wife and material, you're going to be in your feminine energy all of the time, no matter if it's a cashier or, you know, uh, whatever, whatever, a mechanic or, you know, a successful, successful businessman or a politician or whatever, you're going to be, you know, feminine. That's it. That's how it works. Uh, so, yeah, definitely, it's kind of messed up, you know, um, and, and I think it changed, like, in the past 10, 15, 20 years, and it's pretty crazy to think about, but, you know, that's how it works, and that's how it should be, and, you know, if anyone doesn't want to agree with me, well, good luck in your next 50 relationships because you're going to have many of them <laughs> and they're not going to be successful, you know? Uh, so definitely. Also, another thing, um, you know, you said women like to be nice uh, when it comes to like offering to split the bill. You should, you know, th there's a saying, follow the money, you know, and y you'll you'll get the right answer. I think in like 50s and 60s and 70s, mainly like the workforce was just men, you know, women were working, but not as much. Where in today's world, like, you know, pretty much, I think like every girl I went with to high school almost went to like, you know, university to get a degree and then to get a job. Because it's, you know, everyone expects that from you nowadays. So now when women are making money and men are making pretty much the same amount of money, you know, you can tell a woman, you know, look, I'll just take care of you, you know, and I'll kind of like be the, the one man for you. And that's it. You know, we'll have like a loyal, loyal relationship. Now it's like, women are like, well, you know what, I'm making the same amount of money or more than you. Why should I listen to you? You know? So there's only, you know, two ways of going around that. Either, you know, you increase your value as a man and you make more money. So if a woman is making, you know, your girlfriend is making same amount of money, look for ways on how, you know, you can increase your value in the marketplace where you make more money, you know, and then you take care of her. That's it. You know, it's easy. Uh, or the second option is the worst, you know, where she leaves her job and then you're kind of struggling, but you still want to take care of her. So I think the answer is always the same. If you're a man, you want a good relationship, make more money, become better, you know, go to the gym, get better looking and your relationship will work out. Yeah, man, I completely agree with you. And uh, probably the point why this is not really possible nowadays is because nowadays women just don't want to submit to a man, you know. And uh, of course, I think it's not fully on woman's side. It's probably even more on the man's side because we as men gone soft, really yeah. soft. We now... Uh, get like uh, mad at comments sections or something like that so yeah we just got too emotional and uh, yeah a man should be a good leader in the relationship and a woman should submit to him to, to get the best result yeah that's the thing with you know women not being submissive you know if i were to be a woman i wouldn't submit to a fat fuck you know who's just lazy, has zero ambition, and, you know, doesn't do shit with his life. If I would be a woman, like, logically speaking, not from emotional side, just logically, you know, women 
have their emotional side, you know, which is like a whole nother, another world. But just from logical standpoint, if I would be a woman, I would only submit to like a successful, you know, maybe not successful, but a guy who has ambition, who's trying to do something, you know, who looks good. And when I say looks good, I mean, takes care of himself, goes to the gym, you know, tries to look good, tries to dress well, tries to have some sort of style, you know, and yeah, puts in the effort. That's it, you know, and of course takes care of me, you know, if not, then why would I be submissive? It totally makes sense, you know, so I think this, this problem is not because women are like, when feminist and all of that, I think it's because men got really soft. And now women are like, now I have other options, you know, and if I can get that rich, successful guy or a guy with ambition, I'll just get a job and be do very well, you know, because then you can get your own apartment, you know, you, you can do everything and that's it. You don't need a man, you know. If you can't get the one you want, you don't need them. So I totally see why it's like this way. And, you know, then men just have to think, okay, what's the fastest way I can, you know, become valuable? That's it. That's it, you know. Because trust me, like, when, when you're well-traveled, when you're fit, when you're making money, when you're confident, when you're good looking, it's much easier to date than when you're broke, lazy, fat, you know, and I can tell this from my experience, you know, I, like two years ago, I would be scared to go on a date because I would think like, oh, I'm not enough, I'm not enough, you know, and right now when I'm well-traveled and I've seen the world, I went on multiple dates and it's so much easier, you know, women are like, yeah, you're, you're a really nice guy. It's nice to talk to you. You know, you're an interesting guy because you've traveled the world. You have really cool stories. You know, why wouldn't I consider a relationship with you? When on the other hand, you know, I had friends who are like lazy, you know, don't take care of themselves, fat, you know, play video games and stuff like that. They, if they get in a relationship with one girlfriend they can't leave that relationship because now their whole happiness depends on that woman you know not because they're good and they're successful and they're a leader it just depends on their woman you know and if she leaves one day they're depressed because then they realize like oh fuck you know i was fat i wasn't making money i was all of these things and now on top of that even a woman doesn't want me. So then you feel really bad. But when you're rich, not like, okay, you're making money, you're free. You have the freedom. You're good looking, you know, you're well traveled. At that point, if you break up, you're like, all right, you know, it's not a big deal because I was happy before I met you. Okay, we broke up, totally cool, you know, I'm still happy. Because I am who I am. I'm confident in myself. And I don't need a woman, you know, as a source of happiness. I'm happy on my own. And that's how it should be. Completely on point. So, yeah, you touched a topic uh, on women having a lot of options. And I think uh, this is probably one of the reasons why relationships fail right now, too. Because... We can go on men all day, all night, speak about how men are bad, etc. But it's not everything on them. And I think that social media made things way harder because now think about uh, when a woman has a man that uh, since they are women are emotional beings, etc. Uh, when they feel sad or treated not too good like or something like that they just go like on tinder or open their instagram dms and just switch on the, on the other guy and it's not nothing bad about 
switching other to other partners, etc. But even just imagine you having a good guy, you're a woman and you have a good guy and this guy just struggles a lot and he just works really hard and probably does not have any time to spend with her. And since she all emotional, she feels not heard, not listened, and uh, she then just opens a Instagram DM and just gets another man. Yeah, I think, you know, definitely it's an interesting one. Uh, I like that you touched on it. You know, it, it's a really weird dynamic. You know, like, what I like to do is, in any situation I am, I would like, I like to put myself in someone else's shoes. So, like, okay, you know, even if I want to become successful, like, okay, what would Tim Ferriss do? You know, he's like a famous entrepreneur. And then you take action as them. So then think about like, okay, what would a woman do in this situation, you know, which is totally cool, you know, if they feel unheard and they feel not happy, their feelings are valid. You know, you shouldn't hold on to it. You should probably look into like, okay, how true is it? Do I really not talk with her? You know, do we really not touch on the topics or she just feels this way and you know i think the problem is and i i had the same problem in relationships where like like you get too much into it where you know if my girlfriend for example says oh i feel like you're working too much you're not i'm not being heard all of that i'm like yeah whatever you know but then when we break up I look back and I think like, did I really not listen to her? So you have to ask yourself that, you know, because if you actually are this, this guy who just works all the time, never gives any attention. Absolutely. Any girl, any girl, you know, you, you get into a re relationship with, you're just going to break up, you know, eventually. So you just have to, you know, see if, if what she's saying is valid and to some some extent it's, it probably is you know because of course women are emotional creatures but that emotion comes from somewhere you know if you're just making her happy all the time she feels fulfilled she's not going to turn on that dm she's only going to do that when when she doesn't feel happy when she feels unheard you know so, you know, you can never fix it. Sometimes, you know, you're doing your best and it still doesn't work out and you have to move on, but you have to make sure it's not a common theme, you know, on all of your relationships to the point where all of your girlfriends tell you, you don't listen to me, you know, or you don't respect me or something like that. So you have to take that into consideration. But definitely women having a lot of options, you know, is, is trouble, but... I feel like, you know, that's more of a problem in like the US, maybe, you know, Mediterranean Europe, like Spain, Italy, you know, France, maybe Greece, where people are very like outgoing and stuff like that. And it's like, if they don't feel the vibe, they just don't feel the vibe, you know, but I feel like here we're in Dubai, you know, I feel like the people from Asia, and Middle East and, you know, parts of like, yeah, Middle East pretty much, you know, and parts of South Asia, they're more of like, okay, let's make this work. Let's sit down. Let's talk this through and see how this works, you know, rather than just like, let's hit and run. Yeah, so basically, I again really agree with your points. You make really valid points and you go through like, all the sides, all the perspectives. And I probably think that maybe it, it goes like deeper since um, with all the promiscuity that is going on the world, not only on the woman's side, but also in the man's side. And I think that a lot of people just missing the point of their relationships, especially marriages, 
they treat marriages the same the way they treat relationships. So a lot of people think, especially women, not, not to be attacking you guys, you girls, etc. But uh, I think a lot of women is just missing the point because love is not a feeling. Love is a choice. You choose the right person. You choose who is your right person. So it's not about how you feel because we men, we feel bad too. We feel every day that we want, want to leave you or give up, but we just choose to be with you. So a lot of men just stay and go th through that fire. So I think that if we could just bring this back to the old days like we used to do. So in the old days, love was a choice. Love was the commitment and loyalty to your partner. And uh, right now, at these days, at these years, it's everything just reversed. So Yeah, you know, the way I see it is like... What I'm doing is I'm dating to marry. You know, I'm not looking for anything not serious because I don't want, you know, a side girlfriend who I can't talk to properly, share my ideas. I want a proper woman, you know, just one woman, that's all, you know, who I can actually share my ideas, you know, I can grow with, I can actually, you know, feel good with and... You know, I just want her to support me in whatever I do. That's it. So that's the thing. I, I while dating, I, I miss that a lot nowadays. Or like a lot of, you know, relationships turn into marriages when they shouldn't turn into marriages. Yeah. And they turn into families when they shouldn't because it's not the right person, but they really want, you know, a family. They really want that American dream where, you know, they have that house and they have two kids and they have the nice car. They may not want it with that exact person, but they're like, I want the image, you know? And yeah, I think that's the problem because like back in the day when people used to marry, it's like they, they wouldn't spend much time in the relationship itself. They would just get married, marry and then commit, you know? And it worked super well. And now I see people dating for like 10 years and then they get married. It's like, I think you should have been married like seven years ago, you know? Like, what are you waiting for? And if you're still with a person for like 10 years and you haven't been married, like something's going wrong, yeah. you know? Something's not good. Because, for example, like, you know, I've heard so many stories, especially like we're from Eastern Europe, you know? formerly Soviet Union. Um, in Soviet Union, it would be like, okay, you date for three months, let's get married, you know, let's wrap this up and let's be loyal to each other, let's commit. You know, if, if we're going to live together, if we're going to be together, let's just make this happen properly, you know. For example, like my parents married, I think after 11 months of being together and that was enough for them to decide like, all right, let's just commit to this relationship and let's have a family, let's get married. And, you know, it's been 32 years since since then. And, you know, they're still together and they're crushing it. They're happier than ever. Than ever. So, yeah, I think, I think people miss the point. Like, I, I don't think, you know, my dad feels like being with my mom every single day. I don't feel like my mom thinks like, oh, Oh, so good. You know, she's going to spend another day with my dad. It's not every day where they're like super happy, you know, but they just work, work it out. Do they have arguments? Absolutely. A, a real relationship should have arguments. If you don't have arguments, it means you don't care about each other, you know. So, yeah, it's just pushing through that fire, you know, definitely. And there will be hard moments, but you just need to push through it. That's it. Imagine right now that you mentioned that uh, your parents sometimes argue, etc. So imagine them uh, in b being in these kind of relationships that we have today. So and this scenario would be that uh, your mom would be uh, not happy and just acted on her emotions. But instead, because 
uh, we are from other culture and they just choose to fight they just choose to be together still and just go through all that because like i said before love is not a feeling it's a choice to be with the, the that same person so when you think about this way this is why a lot of marriages succeeded and since right now everyone thinks that i should feel super good all the time and if i don't i can just quit and find something better because nowadays we have a lot of options on social media on the internet and yeah so this is just scary <laughs> yeah i think you know like if a person leaves just because you know you're arguing too much like they're just gonna go into another relationship and it's gonna end the same way where they start arguing and you know there there's never arguments who you know come to an agreement and they just break up that's pretty much it you know you, you have to accept that you'll have arguments because it, it just how it works when you care about each other you're gonna argue more or less you are gonna do it so it's weird how it works that, you know, some people see argument as like, oh, we're not having a good relationship, where in reality, you're actually trying to make it better. But if the other person is like, no, I'm not going to listen to you because we're arguing too much, I'm just going to leave, it's just going to end the same way for them in the next relationship, you know, because, you know, if it's a woman... For a man like me, you know, I'm very straight up. I like to say things right away. You know, if I don't like something, I tell, you know, the girl, look, I don't like X, Y, Z. And if she doesn't like that, I don't like it. And we get into an argument. I don't care. I want to fix that problem anyways, you know. And I know some men would be like, okay, okay, she got mad. You know, I won't tell her that again. But I guarantee you, look back, you know like three years later down the line that guy will be so miserable where like he's gonna be super mad and then he's gonna start the same argument and it it's gonna end up very bad you know because it bothers him so much and you know i've seen like i had friends like that who are in terrible relationships like that where they're suffering but they're scared to say it because like oh you know i'm scared to get into an argument with my girlfriend because we're gonna break up or some stupid shit like that better to break up than be in a terrible relationship you know yeah so i think the reason why uh, a lot of men are scared to tell their feelings or something like that is because they deep down fear of losing that woman because we as men even if we look at the average man in total so everyone can relate to it so we don't have a lot of options you know we have to grind we have to in, improve we have to get in the shape we have to get some money etc so we have to work to get a woman so and when you are not that man and you get a woman in that case you just hold on to that woman and you are scared to break up with her because you are scared to be alone so this is why men cannot just focus on women and this is why in two of the biggest religions has this uh, point that man has to be focused on his purpose on god and etc so doing this you will always become better men and you will just not be afraid to lose her because you will be happy within yourself and you will not be like dependent on a woman to make you happy because it should not be like that everything goes back to the same point right yeah. just become a high value man you know whatever high value for you is become happy on your own be strong be you know good feel good feel confident in your own skin and then go out then look for that relationship you know and i guarantee you it will be much better, you know, the, the, the journey of dating, you know, the relationship itself, like everything will be much better when you feel happy, you know, when 
Two happy people meet each other, they're happy. When two unhappy people meet each other, they're unhappy. When one happy person meets another unhappy person, they get together, they both become unhappy. Yeah. Okay? So just make sure you're happy, your partner is happy. Then when you come together, it's a great couple, you know? I should, uh, I always just wanted to say that probably you should not aim to be happy. You should aim at loving yourself first because I heard a lot of quotes that s said this, that uh, you have to love yourself first to be able to be loved or something like that. So if all comes to loving yourself, so when you go to gym, you get in shape, you start to loving yourself. When you start to educate yourself, all things come to like loving yourself. And when you love yourself, you don't have to actually like go and search for a woman or for a man. You just like attract them because you're just happy on your own. You know what, what makes you happy and yeah. Yeah, definitely. That's, that's a valid point. So the whole lesson of this, you know, short clip or a podcast, it's just don't chase anyone. Attract. And to attract, you need to be the best version of yourself.